A sense of place is familiarity so ingrained that sometimes I am not even aware of it. It comes in part from growing up with a farming background that expected me to pay attention and to know how things work. It is the ability to absorb information that is assimilated into my mind and my unconscious behavior. It is a sense of knowing, in a nonverbal way, about the quality of the soil, the balance of light and moisture, what the weather is going to be, when to plant and when to harvest, and how to drive a car across a field when there are no roads. It is the ability to see subtleties that escape many people, to understand vast spaces, the smells, the feeling of humidity on skin, the sounds and the solitude. It is to understand the cycles of nature, knowing everything that lives, dies. We are all part of that cycle. What we call a place is a kind of infinity. So to be present in a place is to have a glimpse of infinity directly and to be able to participate in its possibilities. Sometimes photographs can reveal aspects of that immediate infinity of a place that haven't been seen before or remind us of how amazing it is to be in a place, you know, to be alive. I believe that the power of place is linked to our intention, attention or intention on it and our awareness of our bodies within that space. And so this awareness shifted dramatically when I became a mother. So I went from this perspective of being five or six feet in the air to being on the ground with my children all the time. So the spaces that became most intimate, familiar, and powerful to me were these liminal spaces, the corners of the room, um, the, the places where the bones of the architecture meet within our homes. And uh, I was in residence at the Headland Center for the Arts in the Bay Area, and uh, being right next to Angel Island, it made me start to think about my family's immigration from Japan. It would take three days to two nights in order to um, get through the immigration process. And so I went and I camped on the island for three days and two nights. And all the work that you see was created while I was there during that trip. I have deep ties to Kansas. I went to undergrad and grad school here. It definitely was a positive experience and shifted my work into the social political realm. The work in this exhibition, Gossip Bridal, stems from uh, Lawrence Journal World newspaper that I found in the attic of 936 where we lived. There's an article on the historical use of gossip bridles in this country and in Europe. It's a, it's a horrible tradition um, that's been on my mind all these years. The drawing that I have in the exhibition is based on an earlier drawing from a series of dream journals that I kept in the 1990s. What I found was that I would keep coming back to the same sorts of places in my dreams. Uh, a lot of times they were familiar places, uh, like classrooms or bars or uh, houses that I'd been in or lived in. But I do come back to Kansas sometimes in my dreams. And in a sense, being in this exhibition is a kind of homecoming. The landscape in Kansas has a, has a powerful influence on me, on my psyche, on uh, just the way I look at things. When I'm driving around and I, I come to a clearing and it opens up and um, I think, oh, how beautiful this is. And it's like this feeling of um, everything's possible. Uh, there, there are no limitations. The Kansas River has deepened my connection to this place on so many levels. I first discovered it hiking and biking on the river trails, and then I found a few places along the river banks to paint, and, and in the late 90s, I discovered this river uh, from above, how magnificent this humble waterway looks um, flying over it. It still felt kind of inaccessible to me until I paddled it. I had a new way to move through the landscape and participate in it more fully. My work emerges from all these layers of experience and my desire to share these discoveries and just encourage people to slow down and pause for even just a few seconds. Notice uh, where's the weather coming from today? How high is the river? Um, make a habit of noticing. Notice 
how this place is like no other. I have developed a sense of place, an understanding of beauty, and these lessons have served me well as I've traveled the dirt roads of Kansas or been on the rugged coast in Northern Ireland in a kayak up against the Shoup Glacier in Prince William Sound in Alaska or on the edge of Iguazu Falls in Brazil. I now have and I'm able to record a certain sense of place and the power and beauty therein. First, I think I was trying to understand who am I and where is my place in the world. Um, but the more, the older I've gotten and the more I've thought about this or done work about it, I realize that <clears throat> I'm more interested in the sense of the wholeness of this planet and our experiences as human beings than in the divisions of this place versus that place. I feel that these times right now, it's really important then rather than just thinking about my house, my town, my place, that we have a larger sense of the globe, the earth, the conditions that we all share, not just us, but other species, um, and how our, our um, actions are affecting everyone.